Hello everyone, welcome to Tech Systems. In this video, we will talk about basics of control systems. After watching this video, you will be able to explain what is a basic control system, what are main types of control loops, what is the role of input devices, controllers and control devices in a control system and what are commonly used control technologies in buildings. I am engineer Abdul Rahman with more than 5 years of experience in building management system. I am bringing a complete course about BMS on this channel. So please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you will be notified about our future videos. A building control systems helps in improving energy efficiency, in achieving comfortable working environment and in reducing operating and maintenance cost. To understand a control system, let us consider a scenario that you are in a room and it is summer. There is an air conditioner in the room which can be switched on or off via a switch on the wall. There is also a thermometer in the room through which you can observe the temperature. Your task is to maintain 23 degrees Celsius in the room. How would you do this? To perform this task, you will observe the thermometer to notice room temperature. If room temperature is above 23 degrees Celsius, you will turn on the AC. And when that temperature goes below 23 degrees Celsius, you will turn off the AC. This is an example of a control system where you are manually performing all the tasks. Basically, you are doing the followings. You are observing the room temperature. You are comparing the room temperature to the required temperature. This is known as decision making. And based on the brain signal, you are taking the actions, either turning on or off the switch. Similar to the previous example, any control system to work efficiently, it must perform the three actions. It must measure the data and provide as input to the system. Measure data then shall be compared to a set of desired outcome, outcomes or instructions. An output is produced based on the measure data to change or maintain the environment. Control system can either be a manual control or an automatic control. Example of a manual control can be turning on and off of a light or a fan inside your room, while auto controls depends on the technology to perform their actions. A control system consists of an input devices, controller and output devices which are also known as controlled devices. Input devices measure data and these are first step of control. These can be sensors and contact closures. A sensor repeatedly measure data such as temperature, humidity, pressure and airflow, while contact closures are switches and buttons. Examples of contact closure devices will be differential pressure switches, limit switches and flow switches. A controller takes in data and process it using a logic. It collects needed data and compare the measurement with the standards. Example of a controller can be a mechanical device like, in, like a pneumatic controller or some mathematical logic inside a microprocessor based controller. An output is a result of calculations inside the controller. A controlled device changes its state based on the output from the controller. The controller activates a control device in order to produce a desired change. Examples of control devices can be damper actuator, valve actuator, relay or a contactor. Inputs or outputs to a control system can be either digital or analog. A digital signal has only two states, either on or off, which can also be represented as 0 and 1. Example of a digital control is on of command for an exhaust fan or open close status of a damper. While an analog signal has variable values within a range, for example from 0% to 100%, or 0 to 10 volt signal or 4 to 20 milliampere signal. Examples of analog signals are temperature readings from a temperature transmitter or pressure reading from a pressure transmitter or 0 to 10 volt control signal to a damper or a valve actuator. So to summarize a control system, it is a system that measures data, for example, temperature, 
and feeds that data to a controller. Controller compares input to a set point and when needed make a changes with the control device to achieve the set point. A simple control loop is defined as one input to a controller housing the control logic which provides an output to a control device. A controller will typically contain a collection of control loops used to manage a system such as AHU, chiller and FCOs. There will generally be many controllers combined to form a building management system. Let's look at the control loop in more details. Input signal to the control loop is called the controlling variable. The controller in the control loop decides what to do based on the value of the controlling variable. This could be air temperature in, in a room. The controlled variable is whatever is affected by the control device. This might be air flow or water flow rate. There are two types of control loops, open control loop and closed control loop. In an open control loop, output has no effect on the controlling variable. This is also referred to as no feedback control loop. A simple electric laundry dryer is an example of open control loop. The dryer is turned on and controlling variable is drying time set with a dial on the front. The output, the controlled variable tells the dryer to keep rotating and heating the laundry. The dryness of laundry have no effect on the timer setting. The dryer will continue running until the end of the preset time even if the laundry is already dried. In a closed control loop, controlling variable is affected by the actions of control device on the controlled variable. This is referred to as feedback. This is most common type of control loop system used in BMS. From the previous example of electric dryer, if we measure the moisture level of the laundry and feed that data to the controller, then the controller will compare that moisture level to, the, to a set point. When moisture level drops below a certain level, the dryer will be turned off. Another example of a closed loop is a temperature control inside our room using the thermostat. A thermostat is a combination of temperature sensor and controller. Temperature set point is adjusted on the thermostat. When room temperature is higher than the set point, it gives command to the compressor to turn on. When temperature reaches the set point, compressors, compressor is turned off again. Control systems vary in terms of their complexity and capability. They are divided into following categories. Pneumatic control, electric control, electronic control, and direct digital or DDC control. A pneumatic control use compressed air to perform control actions. Historically, they were very common as they were the first solution for automatic control. Nowadays, they are obsolete in building controls, but still used in industrial applications. For their time, pneumatic control was cost effective and well understood by the facility maintenance staff. An electric control system operates on line or low voltage. They use combination of electrical and mechanical means for example, bimetallic strips for operating the circuits. Thermostats are very popular examples of electric controls. This can be SPST controller, SPDT controller, or potentiometer type controllers. An example of electric control system is turning on and off of an electric iron. Bimetallic strip works as thermostat and opens the circuit when the temperature goes above the set point. And electronic control systems operate on low voltage and use solid state components for control. Input signal from the sensors are amplified and feed to the system. Electronic controller is a combination of power supply, signal amplification circuits, process comparing circuits, and output relays. Adjustment to the sequence can be made using potentiometers and switches. Lastly, direct digital controls or DDC. DDC use microprocessor based controllers. These controllers measure signal from sensors, perform control routines in a software program, and take corrective actions in the form of output signals to the actuators. These are most commonly used controls inside uh, today's buildings. 
a DDC controller can contain a single control loop or multiple control loops to control many processes. As for example, a single DDC controller can control several air handling units to control temperature of different areas of a building. Advantages of DDC controllers are Complex and precise strategies can be implemented through software programming inside DDC controllers. They are flexible as control algorithms can be easily changed. Systems can be controlled or monitored remotely through a workstation. They are low maintenance as controllers don't drift or need recalibrations. The disadvantage is application engineering programming skills are required to program the system. Also, facility maintenance staff may not be able to maintain the system unaided and need support from the supplier in case changes are required. Thank you for watching this video. If you find this video useful, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Also hit the bell icon so that you will be notified of our future videos.